Hey there, and welcome to lab number one. Uh, this week in lab, we are going to learn a little bit about uh, the review from the material that was covered in CSE 1321. So we're going to cover topics like loops, we're going to cover topics like arrays, two-dimensional arrays, and just putting that together and how to write a very basic program. Um, so this week's lab, you're going to get to by clicking on the FYE site every week. This is where you're going to come, ccse.kennesaw.edu slash FYE. And once you're here, you're going to click on, click on labs and assignments and then click on 1322. And in here, there will be a link for lab number one. And there will also be a link for the assignment. If it's already posted, the assignment generally gets posted at the beginning of the week. So lab number one looks like this this week. And that's what we're going to go over the material that's in here. So the first thing that you're going to need as a Java student is you're going to need a copy of IntelliJ, which is the browser that we use. Um, sorry, it's the IDE that we use for this class. So if you don't already have IntelliJ, you would need to download it. And you do that by using your favorite search engine. I just typed in download IntelliJ, and then that brought me to JetBrains website, which is the company that makes it. And then I went to download, and from there, you have a choice of ultimate or community. For the purposes of this class, all you need is the community version. So you're going to download the EXE and go through the install. Once you're done with all of that, you should end up with a window that looks something similar to this. Yours might be um, white or it might be dark, just depending on your um, how your um, computer is set up. All right, so each week when you come in, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a new project. And when you start off and you click New Project, it's going to give you choices over on the left. For every week, you're going to choose Java. There's going to be one week we're going to tell you to choose Java FX, but for now you're going to do Java. You don't need to check either of these boxes. You don't need to use any particular libraries. You should just be able to hit Next. And then you're going to want to tell it to create a project from a template using the command line app. Hit Next, and then give it a title. So this is going to be my Lab 1. So generally, I'm going to name it something that makes sense, like Lab 1-Endosolvin or whatever your, your name is. And then I'm going to hit Finish. All right, so it is important that every week you start a new project inside of IntelliJ. I've seen folks who are in week five and they're trying to put the code from all the different labs and assignments together in one project, and that's not going to work out well for you. So definitely new project every week. When you open it up, what you're going to see is that you're going to have a main file under source, and that main file is a main.java, which is always just going to have the skeleton program for you. So it's going to put everything into a package. That's fine. You don't really have to worry about that. Then you're going to see the beginning of a class, class main, and then you're going to have a main method, which is your public static void main, and gives you a comment that says write your code here. Just very briefly, the way you use your IDE, pretty much you type your code in here. If and when you need to compile it, you're going to hit this button up at the top where it says run main. You're going to see down in the bottom right down here, it's saying uh, building, and then eventually it's going to pop open and show you any output that it might have. All right. So for today's lab, and what we're supposed to be doing here is we're supposed to be taking a, um, a set of characters that are given to you already that make up this little picture of a car. And you can see the set of characters. We give you a make forward method, which has a whole bunch of information already in it. Um, and that is the layout for this car. And then when you print that, you're going to see the car you're going to write some code that generates the reverse of the car. So effectively, what you're going to do is you're going to turn the car around <laughs> because somebody's been naughty. Um, so we're going to write code that takes every character and moves it around inside of the two-dimensional array. So this is a two-dimensional array because the first row of the array is this roof line up here. This is the second row of the array. This is the third row of the array, which has almost nothing in it. This is the fourth row of the array, and there are a total of four rows. We're told in the instructions that there are 13 columns in the array, and that's because column number one, it's really hard to break it out, is over here, and then two, and then three, and then four, and so on and so forth. And each one of the cells in the array can hold one character. So if you were to think of something like an Excel spreadsheet, um, you would basically be having um, a, a spreadsheet that looks like this, where you would have 13 columns uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, that worked out. And then in your 13 columns, um, you would have uh, four rows. And so I'll just block this out. I'll just color it yellow as well so that you can see. Okay, so this is effectively your two-dimensional array. It looks like 
down here you have an equal sign in this one, and in this one you have, well, equals has special meaning to Excel, so that's kind of difficult. Um, there we go. In this cell we have a, looks like a single quote, and in this cell it looks like we have a dash. And I'm just reading this bottom line down here in case you're trying to figure out where I'm getting this from. And in this cell it looks like we have a parenthesis, and a close parenthesis, and a dash, and a dash, and a parenthesis, and a close parenthesis, and so on and so forth. So I think you're getting the general idea of how that's laid out. All right, so two-dimensional array has data in it, and your job in this lab is to reverse it. So I'm going to do a similar example over in IntelliJ, where I'm going to first off create an array, and then I'm going to go ahead and reverse it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array with six cells, two rows, and three columns. All right, so the way that I do that is this is going to be a character array. So I'm going to start off here in my main, and I'm going to say car, because I'm holding characters in each one of the cells. And then I'm going to call it my array. And then I'm going to put two sets of square brackets like that to indicate that it's a two-dimensional array. And then I'm going to say gets new car. And then I specify I want two rows and three columns. All right. So how would I go about putting stuff into that array? I would say my array at position 0, 0. So the first number that I'm specifying here is the row, and I've specified that there will be two rows. The first row is 0, the second row is going to be called 1. There is no row 2, there, there are two rows, but it's 0 and 1. There are going to be three columns, and those are indicated by this number. This is cell 0, and again it's going to be 0, 1, and 2 because it's indexed from 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the letter A um, into that first cell. And since it's a character, I have to use single quotes. If I was putting a string into each cell, then they would be double quotes. All right. And so likewise, I'm going to do my array at position 0, 1. Uh, that's going to get a B. And my array at position 0, 2. Ugh. And that's going to get a C. All right. So now I'm going to put D in the second row for cell. So that's going to be my array at position 1, 0. And that's going to get a D. And then my array position 1, 1 is going to get an E. And finally, my array at position 1, 2 is going to get an F. Okay, so what I've created is if we were to go back to that wonderful little Excel spreadsheet, which I seem to have closed because that made sense, I've effectively created an array that looks like this. Okay, and it's just those six cells, three columns, two um, rows. So the goal of this lab is that I want to reverse each of the rows. So when I'm done, I want it to look like C, B, A, and then I want F, E, D. And you can see what I did was I moved that to the first cell. I move, I left the middle cell where it is, in this case because there's only three cells, and I moved this cell over to here. So they are reversed. Okay, but I didn't do anything to the rows. The rows are left as they are. And so that's the goal of the lab. All right, so the first thing is I'd like to print this out so that I can see it on the screen and maybe understand. So how do I print a two-dimensional array? Well, I'm going to need a loop. So I'm going to use a for loop. I'm going to say for int i equals 0, i less than 3, i plus plus. And then that would allow me to go across the cells in a particular row. I need another loop that's going to move me between the rows. So I'm going to do that loop outside of this loop. So I'm going to say for, and really what I should have done is I should have done that up to 2, and that's going to do the rows for me. All right, so inside of here, I'm going to make a separate loop that goes through the columns. So I'm going to say for int j equals 0, j less than 3, j plus plus. And I'm putting this loop inside of the other loop because the outer loop is going to start off as 0, which is going to deal with this row. The inner loop is going to start off at 0, which starts with this cell, then move to 1, which is this cell, then move to 2, which is this cell. That's why they need to be inside each other, because then... When I move on to the second row, which is the outer loop i gets to value 1, then I'm going to be looking at cell 10, 11, and 12. And so I'm going to want to do the inner loop 
each time I have an outer loop. So if I had 10 rows, I would want to do the inner loop 10 times. And that's why I put one inside the other. All right, so for i equals 0, i less than 2. Why did I do less than 2, not less than 3? Well, in this case, the cell or the array has two rows. And I needed to do cell 0 and cell 1. So i equals 0 starts me off at 0. i plus plus means that that i is going to get incremented each time we go through the loop. So the first time it's 0. The second time after it gets incremented, we're going to be on 1. 1 is still less than 2. So it will go through the loop with 0, and it will go through the loop with 1. But at the end of that iteration, when it tries to increment i, i is now going to be equal to 2. And when it comes back to the top of the loop, 2 is not less than 2. It's equal to 2. It's not less than 2. So the loop is going to exit. So you would do i equals 0, i less than 2, i plus plus for the row, and j equals 0, j less than 3, j plus plus, because I wanted to do rows, uh, columns 0, 1, and 2. I don't want it to ever look in 3. It is an error if you were to say greater than or equal to, because it will try and look in row 2 in that case, which I do not want it to. I want it to look in row 0 and row 1. It's all very confusing because they're numbered from 0. All right, so how do we go about printing this out? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a system print. I'm going to print my array at the position ij. Now, how do I know that I want ij and not 1, 2, or something else? Well, as it goes through the loop, i is going to be 0, so this is going to stay 0 for the first few rows. Then j is going to be equal to 0 first, but then j is going to be equal to 1, then j is going to be equal to 2, and so that's going to give me those three cells. So if I run this right now, so again, I'm just going to press that little green button up there. What I'm going to get out is A, B, C, D, E, F, all in one row. And that's because I used a print, not a print line. If I do a print, it's going to print the character just by itself. If I do a print line and I run it again, what's going to happen is I'm still going to get A, B, C, D, E, F, but they're each going to be on a line by themselves. And neither of those is really what I want. What I want is A, B, C, and then on the next line, D, E, F. So to phrase that differently, I'm going to put it back to print so that they all come out on a row. But at the end of that inner loop, I'm going to just print out a blank line. And so that's going to give me ABC. Then it's going to print a blank line. And then I'm going to get DEF. So this looks like the answer of how I would go about printing out a two-dimensional array. I need a nested loop. I'm going to access each of the cells in the array. And then I'm going to print them out. And when I reach the end of a row, I'm going to go ahead and print out a carriage return so that I can see the next row on the next line down here. The carriage return effectively moves the cursor to the beginning of the next line, so it starts printing. OK, so that's the basics of how we make an array and how we would go about printing it out. The last thing that we're supposed to be able to do here is to reverse an array. And so effectively, what I want to do is I want to take the items that are in cell 0, 0, meaning row 0, column 0, and I need to put that into cell 0. The row is still going to stay the same, 2, because that's the end of the array. So I want to take what's in 0, 0, which is this A, and put it into 0, 2, which is this C. But if I do that, I'm going to lose the C. So I need to temporarily move the C somewhere else while I'm doing that. Anytime that you're switching two variables, which is what we're doing here, we're just switching them in cells in an array, you're going to want to take one of them, put it in a temp temporarily, move the other one over, and then move the temp back down to the first one. So effectively, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hold the item in 0, 2 in a temp variable, then take the item that's in 0, 0 and put it into 0, 2, and then finally move the item from temp back into 0, 0. All right, so let's actually code that. So we're going to say my array at position 0, 2. That's the thing that we're going to want to hold temporarily. And I'm going to need to store that into a character. So I'm going to create a car, and I'm going to call it temp. And I'm going to hold what's in my array at 0, 2. Now I'm going to say my array at 0, 2 is equal to my array at 0, 
zero. That takes the one that's in zero, zero and puts it into zero, two. And then finally, I would say my array at zero, zero gets the temp item. So whatever I put in temp comes back down here. So that will successfully reverse the first two. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this code that prints out the array, and I'm going to paste it back in down here so that it prints it out twice. And I'm going to just put in a comment. All right, so we're going to run that, and we're going to see the ABC as we did before, but then we're going to see after I reverse the row, first row, I get CBA instead of ABC. All right. And so that's a very manual way of switching two things. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to figure out how to do this in a loop because your array is going to have 13 cells. And so it's not just as easy as switching the first and the last one. You're going to have to switch all of them until you get to the middle. So a couple of hints about that. You're going to want an array that are a loop, I'm sorry, that is going to iterate over cells zero through halfway through the array and then you're going to want to put those in the latter half of the array using that temp trick to hold the temporary one. And the reason you only want to do half is because if you continue reversing it, you'll end up back where you started. So for example, if I were to continue reversing at this point, what I have already done here, I would move on and I would try to reverse cell one, which is that B, which there's nothing to do there. But when I move on to reverse cell two, which is the A, I would end up putting the A right back where it was. So make sure you only do half of the array when you're switching it. Um, there are a couple of other little weird things about it uh, that you'll see in the instructions, which are some things like it tells you some of the characters also need to actually be reversed. So you'll see that things like um, the slash here, when it comes backwards, it actually points the other direction. So notice that it's this kind of slant, and then it becomes that kind of slant when it um, goes through the reversing. So as you're changing the characters around, you're also going to have to swap a few of the characters. And the rules for that are listed up here telling you how you go about doing that. But that's basically what you're doing today. So hopefully that will give you a, a good kickstart on where to get started. When you're done with all of this, you're going to have a set of files which contain your, um, your code. And that's what you're going to turn in. In this case, it's a main.java because that's what I called it. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on your uh, name of your project, right click on it. Um, and then down here, you will find open in, and you're going to want to choose Explorer. And then that's going to open up the Windows Explorer, which allows you to see what your actual code inside of this directory. And you can see it's it's storing my code in C colon users easily 13 idea projects demo, yours will be in a slightly different directory, but the same idea will be there, you'll find a project named whatever you named your project. Inside of there, you'll see a source directory, SRC. Inside the source directory, you will have something that looks something like this, com and company, whatever they are. And then inside of that, you'll have a main.java. This is the file that you're actually turning in. And if you ever want to check it, you should be able to open the file with Notepad, and that should show you your source code. If it does not show you your source code, something is wrong. So that's the file that you're going to want to take and submit into your um, grade scope account. All right. Well, that is going to be it for this week. And uh, if you have any questions, talk to your GTA and I will see you soon.